2018 and DJI have already added another drone to the lineup, the Mavic Air, which for all intents and purposes looks amazing. A super aggressive price point combined with 4K and slow motion capabilities could make it an instant hit, but does it gobble up the more selfie focused spark along the way? Welcome back to Byte Review. Let's see if the DJI Spark is still worth getting in 2018. Despite seeing countless videos and pictures, you really don't get a sense of how small the Spark is until you see it in person. This thing really is tiny. The body compares to the size of your average phone, and it easily slips into any bag, camera case, or even a large coat pocket. Despite its small stature, it's really well built. Everything feels nice and solid on the Spark, the battery snaps in with a reassuring click, and there's no sign of any creaky weird plastic. The only downside to its design is the wings don't fold in like they do on the Mavic series, which is a shame, with that included the Spark really would be a mini marvel, but I can see why this isn't included considering the price point, and perhaps that's got more to do with sturdiness of build rather than the convenience. The Spark is limited to recording at 30 frames per second at 1080p and the resulting footage is good as long as you've got a nice clear day and you line up the shot nicely there's almost nothing to put it apart from the Mavics and all the other series. In my opinion it's not really the resolution that holds it away from the others it's more about the frame rate and the dynamic range. Now, the frame rate's locked at 30 which means you can't get any slow motion out of the Spark which is a bit of a shame and the dynamic range seems to be a little off whenever I fly in tougher lighting conditions it can get really confused over to over overexpose or underexpose and weirdly that translates to the white balance too. Sometimes when I'm pitching the gimbal up it will kind of change its white balance on the fly and it makes your footage go from like a nice orange to a weird blue or vice versa. It's only happened a couple of times and like I say it's only in those tougher lighting conditions. It is a shame that there's no flat profile in there for us video geeks but to be honest the Spark's probably not really the right drone for those sorts of customers. I always end up adding quite a huge grade to the Spark's footage anyway to make it look a bit nicer and I can pull out those shadows if it's a bit underexposed as well. And to be honest once you've done that you can get some really nice looking footage. DJI advertised that with no wind you'll get around 16 minutes of flight time on a single battery. However in my use I tend to get around 10 to 12 minutes of flight time depending on the conditions. It really is worth picking up at least one more battery because by the time you're finally getting the shots that you want or are feeling more confident in flying your drone, it'll be time to switch it out. So you'll want to pick up another battery, that's for sure. And this is where the pricing gets a little trickier when it comes to buying the Spark. Batteries are £50 a pop. Add that to the drone itself which comes in at £450, then add £130 for a controller and you're already looking at around £630 and for that you can pick up the Fly More Combo which comes with all of that plus some extra handy bits like chargers and carry cases. So suddenly the cheapest drone in the lineup actually becomes pretty expensive and brings it scarily close to other drones DJI have on offer. I can't stress enough how much the Spark opens up once you get a controller, and it goes from what feels like a toy into a more of a filmmaking tool. Getting the tactile response out of these is so much better than using your phone, and it's got a bunch of controls all over it which make the buying experience so much better. But the best thing of all is it boosts the range considerably, so you're going from like 50 meters on mobile up to 1.2 miles with the controller, and that's in perfect conditions of course, but really is worth going for one. If you forego the controller you can fly the Spark with just your phone, but you are limited to how far your Wi-Fi can go which is usually around 50 to 100 meters, but it's still kind of serviceable to fly. The on-screen controls for the phone aren't actually as bad as you'd think and it's still totally possible to get some good results this way, it just takes a little bit more getting used to. When you finally do take off the Spark actually handles itself well, as long as it's not too windy. There were a few times when I'd take off and the spark would begin to drift a little until I counted it with the controller, which isn't an ideal flying situation. So I used to get really jealous because I don't live anywhere amazing like New York City or any other amazing vistas, but sometimes I forget, despite living in England and despite the weather, I do live by the coast, which means I can get amazing shots.
So is the Spark still worth going for? Well, in my opinion, yes it is. As long as you're not planning to go super drone heavy, if you're thinking of starting a drone YouTube channel or something like that, then the Spark's probably not the right place to look. But if you're looking for some awesome insert shots to add to a vlog or any other kind of small travel based series, the Spark really is awesome. It's worth remembering it's where you go and what you do that gets the footage. It's not really how much money you lay down on a drone, it's how you intend of using it and the locations you go to. Once you get a hold on that, the Spark really can rip out some awesome footage. Overall, the Spark is just really fun to fly. The size is really good and it feels so accessible. As a first drone, it really is an awesome place to start. The only things which I think could be a little bit better is the battery life's pretty poor at about 10 minutes I usually get and the dynamic range can be a bit all over the place but this is the entry level drone and you can't expect everything. The only thing I would change is the batteries. I really wish you could charge these batteries up just with a micro USB going straight into them but you have to physically connect it to the spark to actually charge them. Now you can obviously get a charger that will let you do that but you don't get any of that in the box unless you go for the fly more combo. I hope this video gave you some insights to the Spark and if you're thinking of buying one, then maybe it's made your mind up or anything like that. Just remember that if you're gonna spend upwards of 600 pound on the Spark, the Mavic Air, which is considerably better and it folds away, isn't a huge amount more. So keep that in mind if you do think about buying one. Anyway, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and I will see you in the next one.